Welcome back to the channel guys. We were talking about the 8HP 70 swap into the uh, Nissan 240SX up here in the on the rack with the LS Turbo. Um, so we are carrying on with the 8HP 70 progress and today we're going to talk about um, how I have it mounted. I guess we can talk about my little lift setup here in case you guys are curious about that. I've got a transmission cross member down here on the ground and we're just going to go over basically where I'm at with it. Um, I have been working on it for several weeks now, I guess a couple of weeks since the last video. I just come out here in the shop and I work when I want to as long as I can and uh, just any time I have any uh, interest in working on it. So sometimes these updates are kind of slow uh, because of me. So um, I've been working for a couple of weeks doing stuff and today's going to be kind of catching everybody up on where I'm at and what I've been doing. Okay, so the transmission is uh, basically physically mounted in the car right now. It's bolted up to the engine and the transmission uh, to engine adapter is in place. And I've got a couple of bolts holding it all together. And then I've got this piece of two by four holding the back at the correct height uh, so that I could fabricate the cross member. And then here on the back of the transmission, you can see the plate that I bought from Summit. I think Hooker makes this for uh, some sort of a Dodge uh, muscle car swap for this transmission. And I just wanted it because I knew it'd be pretty close. And so I just bought it and it bolted on great. And then this right here is a GM rear transmission cross member that I was using on my 4L80 and it just uh, bolted on here. I do think I had to enlarge, I think I had to oval out one of these holes or both of them just a tiny bit to make that bolt up, uh, but it wasn't much. And then that bolted on. And then I took my 4L80E cross member over here and modified it so this is how it mounts in the car uh, this would be to the this would be to the front of the car and all i did was i welded on this extension right here so that that uh, gm mount can just slide right down through that hole so i just built this box like that and welded it all the way around and made it as strong as i thought it needed to be and then everything else you see here is for the 4l80 which won't be used anymore and then that's the exhaust pass through right there and then that's just an old fuel pressure regulator mount that doesn't do anything anymore. And then this bolts through the frame rails, through the frame rail over there and over here. And then there's another plate just like that one that goes on the outside of the frame rail. And then two bolts and nuts that squeezes it all together. And so that's how my cross member uh, functions. So that's actually done and ready to go back in the car, which I would do right now, except that it turns out that the starter will not fit. Uh, there's the hole where the starter goes and if you look up in there uh, You can see that the bell housing of the transmission is Right here. So the snout of the starter hits that real bad and I didn't know this was gonna be a problem. Nobody told me this was gonna be a problem the place I bought the Adapter plate from said it specifically said it would not be a problem uh, and they were wrong about that so all these uh, this area here where I've made these sharpie marks all that stuff's got to be carved out to a depth of that right there where those sharp, sharpie marks are. So I got to go that deep in that area and I got to just grind all that back um, just so the starter snout can fit in there. And another real challenge is going to be uh, getting a socket and wrench and stuff uh, to the converter bolt holes. I don't know if you can see up in there or not, but these are two of the converter holes right here. Converter bolts go in those two holes, and then there's four more, you know, around at various degrees, evenly spaced, of course. But the ability to get a wrench in here and get the hardware in there is going to be tough because you're at this angle, so <coughs> it's going to be hard. I don't think it's going to be terrible. It's just going to be not not as easy as it was with the 4L80. That's for sure. So the reason I'm not putting my trans cross member on, obviously, is I got to take it all back out so that I can cut that out right there and then I can put it all back in. So that's what we're doing next. Here's a look at what it looks like up in here. Um, if you want to see that, this looks like this because I hit it with a hammer a bunch of times while I was beating up on this. It's not nearly as bad as it looks. Uh, it's just this is soft aluminum. Anytime you touch it with anything, it makes a visible mark. One thing about this kit is it did not come with this M12 by 1.5. Um, that's a really rare thread for that pitch for that size. It's real fine for, for how big around that is, apparently. I couldn't get that locally, so 
should have been in the kit and it wasn't, I'm gonna have to order that and I do need it because I can only get a few bolts in this thing. A bunch of them I can't get up here because it's too tight. Like these two, this one here, and this one here, and this one here, I'd love to get those, but it's so dang tight. I can't get a bolt in here. Same thing with this one and this one. So I've really only got a handful down here so far that I've identified that I definitely can get. Um, it's making me a little bit nervous, but we'll see how that goes as time goes on. And here's another look at what needs to be carved out for the starter snout to fit. Uh, that whole section needs to be carved out that deep all the way across, uh, including in here on this rib and through this bolt, all that where the hash marks are, uh, has to be carved out. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Here's the converter bolts. There's two here, two here, and two here. There's another issue I forgot to mention is there's no way to reach in and spin the converter to get the bolts to line up with the flex plate when it's in the car. Um, that's a problem. I haven't solved that yet, except I'm hoping that once this is carved out, maybe I can fit my fingers in there and rotate this and get until I can get one lined up. I hope. If not, I don't know what to do because you can't rotate the converter any other way. Is there anything to you about a correction charge? No. Yeah, the computer they have a correction charge on it. Uh, you, you did everything online, right? Oh yeah, same as I always do. Yeah, that's weird. They did change their website, I noticed. Something had updated on their... Some things looked a little different, I noticed, when I logged in the first time. I'll get run this by. You know, I think this happened last time. Another guy picked up. Uh, it's been a while, a month or so. And he, yeah, it was. It was Aaron. And he's, he had to call it in and tell him, and it was no big deal, but there was something weird about it. <laughs> I bet you it's not big. I'm going to take the box, but I'm going to wait and turn it up and I get back in and see what that comes out of it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what happened last time. Thanks. Okay, so the deed has been done. The piece has been cut out. It's right there. Don't exactly love cutting a chunk out of a nice transmission, but sometimes this is just something you got to do, I guess. So that is the piece that came out right there. And I think that's going to give me ability to reach in here and spin the converter now. I don't think I'll be able to get a finger in there exactly. Maybe. But I should be able to get um, a thin pry bar or a flat blade screwdriver, flat headed screwdriver or something. I'm hoping in there. And uh, twist that guy just enough to align him to the holes in the flex plate so I can get a bolt started. So that should solve that problem. And then, of course, the real reason we did it was so the starter could uh, fit through there. So I think that's going to kill two birds with one stone. I guess it's probably time to put it back in the car and mount it up kind of fully for the first time and see how many bolts we can get in it and get an idea of whether we think that's enough bolts. Like I said earlier, I can't even get all these up here, sadly. There's just no room in the car. There's no, there's just no room. The firewall, it's too tight. Um, so I'm gonna get as many around here as humanly possible, including ordering that M12. Um, and then really, I guess I'm just gonna call that good. Now I will be honest, on the 4080 over here, I only ran Let's see, one, two, three, four, five bolts. The entire time I ran this transmission, I only had five bolts in it. Um, so that actually makes me feel a lot better about this situation because this transmission is real similar size and weight, although I haven't weighed it yet. I can just already tell it's about the same weight in the ballpark anyway, and size. So if I can get five or more down here all the way around, um, you know, got a transmission cross member back here holding the back end up. You got maybe five or six here holding it up. Uh, you got a couple dowel pins keeping it aligned. I don't know. Maybe I'm wishful thinking and I'm going to have problems, but I think it'll be okay. Let me know what you think. Okay, here's where we are. I've got the starter up here loose, uh, but it is threaded a few threads on each bolt, so it is actually in its final 
depth this way. It's just not quite in its final height. Um, but uh, yeah, it's in there. And you can see that we've got this much clearance for the snout. And we've got to also bolt up the trans and close up that much clearance there. So I think it's gonna work out perfect. Everything looks good. I think that was the right move to cut that much. And now I'm gonna check, I'm gonna take the starter back out, check and see if I can reach in there and rotate the converter. Okay, good news. Looks like I can, in fact, reach up in here, put some fingers behind the flex plate and rotate that converter with no problem at all. But actually, a surprising amount of room to slide in there with a finger or two. And yeah, I'm rotating the converter right now. So, yep, I can align those up, problem solved. Okay guys, I know this is a kind of a short video, but that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, that pretty much wraps up all the physical mounting of the transmission into the car, as far as I know. Um, so pretty much that's all the all the uh, like fabrication side of stuff, other than the drive shaft, which we'll, we'll have to get to later. I gotta get with the drive shaft shop about that. Um, so I'm gonna stop the video there because that kind of wraps up that portion. Next up will be probably wiring harness fabrication. I've got the wire and I've got the plugs, so I think what I'm going to do next is drop it back down and start building the harness from the trans plug up to uh, wherever I'm going to mount the GCU in the car somewhere. Um, so yep, stay tuned for that and subscribe for that and the rest of the project if you would like to follow along with the whole deal. Uh, ask me questions down below if you have any and I will answer you guys. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.